Hey, Kasak Maya Keperu here, and I want to show you a very ancient and rare painting of an uh, Egyptian woman, Lady uh, Jetpu. And you'll see her as the artist depicts her. And I'll turn right now, and you can see the, the painting of her. And this is very interesting because if you look, she really resembles a lot of the African American women we see today in North America. In fact, I don't see really any distinction. So, this is just further illustrates the point that I was trying to make that the civilization of Egypt, which exists in Northeast Africa, was primarily a black African culture, despite what you may see in Hollywood movies and what the mainstream institutions try to portray or try to lie to you. We have to understand that the world that we exist in today doesn't follow a linear path, meaning that we look upon these ancient cultures which were of color as primitive or naive or pagan, when in reality they were very moralistic and very civilized. And that is because the Egyptologists, the scholars, really try to discredit anything that comes from um, predominantly people of color. So they can further instill this lie of the ancient primitive culture myth so that we can uplift today's notion of technology and advancement. So something to think about there. What I want to show you here is a statue of Nesbin and Neptah together, paired together, sitting down. And my point is, I want to illustrate to you that these are not Europeans, but actually an African couple that's very obvious by the features. And I'll point that out. So take a look real quick. And you'll see them sitting together. And if I can get a closer shot of them, you will see that they have very broad noses, uh, uh, broad lips. Um, the hair is braided and very typical of uh, what you'll see in African American culture. And again, the, the wide facial structure is definitely not of European lineage. So that's a, another example you'll see. And many so-called intellectual Egyptologists will try and debate you that Egypt is a colony of Europe, which is absolutely not true since Egypt is in Africa. It's in Northeast Africa. And you can see by the history and the legacy that they've left of the statues and the hieroglyphics, um, denoting the features, which are plainly of non-European descent. So that's a, another example of Egyptian culture being of African descent. This looks like um, Pharaoh Akhenaten. He's usually depicted with an elongated face. And um, either this is Nefertiti or Akhenaten's daughter. I'm not quite sure. Um, Akhenaten, of course, was a very controversial pharaoh in Egypt, um, the first monotheist in history. And he did away with the polytheistic system. This is a very nice one here. It looks like two people kissing. Um, um, the lips are very clean and very clear to see. You have the ankh there too. You have the ankh up here, and there's a hand. You see that there's a line, and then there's a, there's a hand, which is um, a. That's a sun, sun ray or yeah. autumn? Yeah. When we see the sun rays depicted in Akhenaten's time period, um, the sun rays are depicted with little hands at the end. Now, there's a piece over here that she uh, is that. Yeah, the sun rays. I mean, if you look at the symbolism of the, the, the hand and the ankh, you could say like the sun, the, the rays of life, you know, something like that. And also you can see the pronounced chin on this person. We don't see who he is, but Ron was saying that this is Akhenaten. So um, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, and the, the description here says it's Akhenaten and his daughter offering to Aten. So Aten is the sun, and that's where these little hands are the rays of the sun. Yeah. Cool. It ain't easy to be knocking on. <laughs> yeah, Peace-loving <laughs> Pharaoh. Well, it makes it a little different. Yeah. You get upset. You know, all the jobs that have all been in the past have yeah. changed. All right. Well, thank you, man. You're welcome. Some, uh, <laughs> European paintings here. And we have one painting here is, is that baby Jesus and Mary? Or, or is it Isis and Horus? Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. 
So the inspiration for this comes far back from Egypt. They, uh, Isis and Horus were the original Madonna and child. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. It's like the earliest depiction of Madonna and child, I think, is Isis and Horus. Yeah. Cool. One of the important points I wanted to make about the ancient Egyptian culture in contrast to today our modern culture is that uh, the Egyptians lived their life in a very divine, moralistic way. Their, their whole culture was centered around, um, let's say, for example, religion, but it was more spirituality because everything encompassed a very spiritual way of life from eating to bathing to working. Everything incorporated spirituality and paid homage to the gods versus today where we're basically worshiping on one day, a Sunday, and excluding any type of um, knowledge of who we are and what happens in the afterlife, the Egyptians planned during their life how they would live in the afterlife. And there was an acknowledgement of the afterlife, an acknowledgement that your soul is immortal, that um, you know, energy is neither created nor destroyed, so you will live on. Versus here, the way we're living today is based upon fear that you're caught up in the physical body experience the vehicle, and that's all it is, is just a vehicle, they center this around that and make us think that it's the end all and be all of your existence, that when the physical body dies, you die, and that's the end of it, and there's no discussion of the afterlife, no discussion of, you know, what happens after death. So, the more it can confuse you and keep you from the knowledge of self, the more you'll be fear-based, and when you operate from a perspective of fear, everything you do can be in a very selfish, selfish way and it always keeps you wanting more because you feel as though you can't diminish yourself to help your neighbor because then you'll be lacking. But when you start to understand that you're an immortal soul and you connect it with the Supreme Being, that you have abundance, that you can't be deficient in any way, shape or form. And that's what the Egyptians understood. So in our modern society, we walk around with the idea and the notion of accumulating wealth, of accumulating goods, um, accumulating material items. And if we don't, then someone else will take from us and have more than us, and, and then we'll be insufficient. When you are good as you are, you have everything you need if you just tune into your divine spirit. That was the genius of the ancient Egyptian culture because, again, everything operated from the spiritual perspective with the understanding that you are not the vehicle, you are the spirit who is experiencing that lifetime through the vehicle for the purpose of the Supreme Being understanding itself better. So, you have to really give um, praise to um, ancient cultures for understanding this very fundamental truth and how we, the way we're living today, is diametrically opposed to that for the purposes of keeping you focused on the physical body, getting you trapped into that understanding. And when you're trapped in the, the physical body and thinking it's the end all and be all of your existence, then you're pretty much damned at that point. You know, you, there, there's pretty much no hope for you because you are, again, creating your own karma and circumstances where you will experience pain and suffering because you're caught up in that. That's what you think is all about life, is the physical, and then when you experience pain, or the physical body experiences pain, you think that's, that you're suffering when you have the ability to turn inward to your, your spirit and be free of that pain and understand that no matter what happens in this lifetime, you're immortal and you will experience hundreds of life, lifetimes and existences as different persons to gain experience and to gain knowledge through that. So many religious institutions today really condemn ancient cultures because that's part of the plan, that's part of what they're supposed to do, is to condemn ancient cultures, to keep you away from that understanding and that knowledge. And they do it from a very ignorant and righteous perspective when they are so off course. But you have to understand that it's part of the agenda to do that because the society wants to keep you ignorant of self. So, that's some thoughts on my part there. This is Kasankma Kepiru for New World Dimensions. That's all for now.